Hi everybody, this is Valerie Gregoire, Natural Health Consultant, and this is my dog Wiley. And I'm here today to talk to you about itchy skin problems with dogs. Wiley develops some itchy skin a couple times a year, and it really drives him crazy. And it can result in some pretty bad hot spots, um, those sores that are really hard to heal. So it took me a while, but I figured out some things that would help him, and I wanted to share them with you today. Okay, so let's get started. Um, so like I said, a couple times a year, Wiley would develop this itchy skin, and it would always start with licking uh, between his t um, paws. And I think a lot of you have experienced this, and um, I see a lot of people comment about the itching around the paws. So why is that happening? There's actually a reason for it. But before I explain to you the reason for it, let me go into the other symptoms. So first I'll see him licking around the paws. In the evening, we're trying to go to sleep around 11, 1 o'clock in the morning. There's that lick, lick, lick. So you know there's something brewing. Um, then he'll start to develop itching around the um, hindquarters. Um, so he'll start itching his actual skin. And another symptom would be that he gets this runny eye look. His eyes don't look normal. They don't look as perky as they should. And they look a little watery. That's one of my symptoms that I watch for that tells me the early um, warning signs that this is going to happen. If I'm not paying attention and I let this happen, then he ends up with a hot spot, which is a large sore on the hindquarter areas. It's completely no fur, nothing, just this big sore, and they're hard to heal. Hard to put anything on them because the dog wants to lick it off. Um, Sometimes you'll see people get a little cone on the dog's head so they can't lick that. But if you can catch the early symptoms, the licking of the paws, the little bit of watery eyes, and then starting to lick on the body, then you're going to be able to turn it around before it becomes a problem. Now, from a medical standpoint, the uh, veterinarians would say that this is... Um, either maybe an allergy to something outside. My veterinarian used to tell me that maybe Wiley rolled in the grass and the grass had pollens from the trees sitting in it and then the pollens irritated the skin. That may be the case, okay? Um, I'm not sure that that would be the total cause because I found a lot of other causes that make more sense, but I think that might be a trigger to irritate the situation or make it escalate, okay? Then the other thing um, that the veterinarians tend to think is um, aller uh, fleas, okay? So we're going to look for fleas because we got itchy skin, so we want to make sure there's no fleas. But um, Wiley doesn't normally pick up fleas, and so flea-free we are. And it's in the middle of winter, so there wasn't the outdoor allergies like normally. So what would be causing this? Okay, so in Chinese medicine, they call something called damp heat rising to the skin. It sounds complicated, um, but it makes sense to why these symptoms would occur. Okay, in Chinese medicine, damp heat means that something is not necessarily digesting right is usually the case, but it can also be caused by something that the liver is not dealing well with. So the first two things that can cause this damp heat to rise to the skin and cause heat and inflammation, okay, is something wrong with the diet, okay? So if we're looking for foods that are hard to digest for the dog, so if you have a dog food that has corn or wheat or chemicals in it, um, a poor quality dog food, this could cause a problem, but also maybe people food, maybe there was a birthday party this weekend and somebody gave the dog a hot dog and he carried away the whole darn hot dog and ate it. Okay, whenever you're dealing with something that doesn't digest well, then you can create this damp heat that rises up and affects the liver and then affects the blood. And it, um, what happens is uh, it rising up and the liver can't detoxify whatever it is it's having the problem with. It can't get it out of the body through the normal channels of the kidneys and the liver fast enough. So it builds up in the blood, these toxins, 
And then this creates a heat that is literally felt like itchy crawly skin on the dog. And because there's the smallest of capillaries between the paws, and because the smallest of capillaries are in the eyes, those are the two areas you'll see the symptoms of that heat first. So the eyes become watery, um, or they look like the dog doesn't feel good, and the paws become very itchy before the rest of the body becomes itchy. So this is that heat rising up. It causes inflammation, irritation, and it also bothers the dog psychologically because they get kind of anxiety because why is they feeling all itchy crawly all of a sudden? So they also kind of get this anxiety that they itch themselves and then suddenly they run across the room as if something bit them and they're all upset and they can't sleep and they can't get comfortable. So it, it also affects the anxiety of the dog. So first of all, look at the dog's diet. Did you switch foods? Did you give them some treats? Okay, you know, there's a lot of chewable treats out there, but they're mostly made of cornstarch and wheat. Okay, so a dog eats a whole cornstarch little bone, it could create this kind of a problem for them. Now, poisons in the environment. Maybe the dog ate something rotten, or one of your neighbors threw some leftovers out on a pile somewhere and the dog came along a couple days later and ate it, that might create some kind of toxic poison reaction that the dog had to digest that food. The other thing is, think about flea products, okay? Did you use flea products, flea bath, um, lawn care products? Did somebody spray the lawns um, with uh, the chemicals to kill the weeds and the dog rolled in the lawn, okay, and got exposed to the chemicals? Were you perhaps um, revarnishing some cupboards or, you know, wood furniture with some shellac or something that is toxic and, and the dog was laying in the room the whole darn time breathing in the fumes, okay? So look for environmental toxins, toxins from the food, like poor quality food and additives or hard to digest products in the dog food or the dog's treats. So you need to figure out where that came from and uh, eliminate that as best you can, but we also need to clean the liver out to get rid of these symptoms. Now, before we talk about what to do internally, I want to talk about what I do externally because you cannot sleep if the dog is itching, itching, itching all night long. It's crazy, right? So I have three products that ended up being my go-to for this problem, okay? Now, the first one is a Nature Sunshine product called Herbal Trim. Whoops, so hard to figure this out. Okay, Herbal Trim is an aloe vera putty arco based product. And aloe vera is, of course, good for hot conditions of the skin because you put aloe vera on what? Sunburn, right? So a hot condition of the skin responds well to aloe vera. And you could use pure aloe vera for this. The reason I use the Herbal Trim is, if you can see this, comes out like water, okay? And it literally feels like slippery water at the best, okay? I mean, it's really, really thin. It soaks in almost immediately. There's a few essential oils added to it to help to draw that into the skin as well. So I use that because with Wiley's long hair and with most dogs, they have this really dense fur by their rear end, which is the area that, of course, itches the most because of the dense fur makes less circulation there. Um, so you got to get something that can get through the fur and get onto the skin. So I pour about um, a nickel or a quarter's worth of the herbal trim into the palm of my hand. Then I add about five drops of jojoba oil. I don't know if I can get that. Okay. There we go. Jojoba oil is also a nature sunshine product. And this is a very special oil. One thing is it contains vitamins and minerals that repair and nurture the skin. So you're kind of giving the skin some food to heal itself with, okay? Secondly, it's anti-inflammatory, so we're going to calm down everything that's going on. And it's got some antibacterial properties, which is really important because if the dog keeps licking the skin and eventually breaks the skin open, then you're going to allow in some bacteria 
then you can develop the hot spot, an infection, or a yeast infection on the skin. But initially, damp heat rising to the skin starts with skin that has no cuts on it of any kind. It's just coming up the surface, can't get out, the dog's licking it to try to soothe itself. So this jojoba oil is anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, and nurturing to the skin with the repairing nutrients it needs. Then the third thing is the dog, I want him to go back to sleep, so I add my organic lavender oil from Nature Sunshine. Okay, now don't just get any lavender oil off the grocery store, or, you know, Walmart or someplace, you know, just make sure if you don't buy the Nature Sunshine that you buy something that you know that you're really getting true lavender oil, okay? But this is an organic lavender oil, so I feel real good about that. I'm going to add about um, three to five drops in that, in my hand. So somehow I figured out how to do all this, holding my hand like this. Stir it up, and then I call the dog over or go to the dog, and I start, and I just work it in like this, okay? Work it in, get it all in through there until you get it right down to the skin. Now, the dog is going to appreciate this so much that as soon as I go to the medicine cabinet to get these ingredients in the middle of the night, he is outside the door wagging his tail waiting for me to put this on him because he knows that these things are going to calm his skin down, make him feel better, and he can fall back to sleep. You might have to repeat it in a few hours until you get those toxins out of the blood, but it's going to help. also makes their hair really, really soft and nice, so it kind of a fringe benefit. Okay, so we doing that topically two or three times a day is needed, okay? Then, clean the liver, okay? Chinese liver balance by Nature Sunshine works excellent for dogs. It's not toxic to them at all. I've been using it for over 10 years or so with my dogs. And um, just one capsule for around 25 pounds. Now, Wiley weighs uh, 11 pounds, but I still give him one capsule. So in the 25 pound range, I'd use a capsule a day. If my dog was 50 pounds or more, I'd use a couple capsules a day. So I give them one capsule of liver balance and that will help to detoxify and cleanse the liver and help the liver deal with the toxins to get it out of the body. And then um, if for some reason you didn't have the Chinese liver balance, which is my preference for the, the dogs, you could use Enviro Detox if that's what you had on your shelf. Um, that's more of an American um, herbal formula, but it's got burdock in there right at the beginning, which is really good for skin, toxic skin conditions. It's got some dandelion in there, which is excellent for dogs and all animals to cleanse the liver. Fenugreek, which cleans the lymphatic system. And then it's got some herbs to stimulate digestion and cleanse the blood and settle down the digestive tract. So that's not a bad idea um, because this might have came from food, which in Wiley's case, it always comes from food. He either got a treat from a neighbor, um, well-meaning as they are, junk food, okay? He eats too many of them and then he gets this condition or he goes and finds something that somebody threw out um, because he's got a liberty of about a five mile radius of our house that he's allowed to roam in. Okay, um, next thing is kind of correcting the acidity that happens in this situation, okay? So in this situation, the blood becomes acidic. We need it more alkaline. Acidic blood does not release toxins well from the cells, so we need to alkalize. And so the best formula for animals that I found is Herbal Trace Minerals, and it is a combination of alfalfa, kelp, and dandelion. And believe it or not, this formula used to be called canine. It was originally made for dogs, and this was some um, 35 years ago um, that Nature Sunshine came out with this formula. It was called Canine, and it was given to pregnant dogs to give them more of the trace minerals they needed to have nice, healthy litters. Well, it worked so well that everybody and the dogs 
did so well on it. If you if an older dog takes herbal trace minerals, they become like little puppies again. They feel so good. They they're healthy. You know they they're happy. They're wagging their tails. They want to play. So this is my go-to uh, formula for dogs, but you're going to use it in this situation as well to get rid of the acids out of the skin um, and to also flush the kidneys and liver, clean the blood, that type of thing, and provide trace minerals that are needed for over 2,000 different enzyme reactions in the body. So it can be just a case of not enough trace minerals, the animal doesn't digest food properly because he can't make the enzymes he needs to make. So this is an excellent formula. Oh, uh, after it was called canine, because all the pregnant women wanted to try it, they changed the name to combination three, T-H-R-E-E, -E, and that was because it had three herbs in the formula. I can't even do this right. There you go. <laughs> Alfalfa, kelp, dandelion. Um, and then after the laws changed that you could kind of name an herbal formula to represent somewhat what it did, if as long as it was legal what it did, then that's when they changed it to herbal trace minerals because it was trying to tell you that this formula is full of the 77 trace minerals that you will not find in your commercial greens or commercially grown vegetables. Um, you're going to find it in spirulina, kelp alfalfa because it's got like really long root system like 18 feet I think I read you know so it's it's a a great source of the minerals so I give them one herbal trace mineral one liver balance a day and then I put that stuff on topically and one to two days you're immediately seeing a result because he's starting to get that out of his system and then in a few days he stops itching all together and then those ingredients that we're using topically he help to heal up any of the hot spots but if they do have a hot spot I'll add silver um, shield gel onto the hot spot to help make sure no bacteria gets in there and an infection gets started but dogs love silver gel um, they love the taste of it um, I think maybe just because they think they need it um, so if you put it on their skin, you need to distract the dog for about five minutes to let the gel get into the skin. Then if the, then they'll usually forget about it and not lick it off. But even at that point, enough's gotten in there to do the job. So silver gel topically on any broken skin hot spots. Okay. Well, I hope this helps you the next time your dog is itching. I hope you remember all this and you have a great day. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.